let's hope let's begin and basically i'm going to share my passion which you know with bnhs of course was by when after i left my corporate job from lakme i never looked back you know because uh, that was uh, where i found myself i discovered myself and uh, i met people like salim ali and uh, mr daniel and so many other people who and which where where i grew up and i i know so much that's where i could get a opportunity to write about nature and finding butterflies was what what was a love affair i had developed there in bnhs and that's a never never ending chase and i like to share and actually be a butterfly showed me how beautiful our country is actually you know right from my veranda from my backyard i started chasing out i grew up in the suburbs of mumbai uh, devnar and gondi so uh, i grew up there uh, you know catching f- f- crabs and fishes and snakes with the local uh, koli boys so you can imagine that was my beginning and um, uh, and my of course my parents also encouraged me to keep pets and that made me more responsible also and that time there was no internet no television so this was a hobby nature and i and got a job of course with bnhs and um, i like to share now uh, with you my passion uh, which um, i start chasing butterflies and butterfly showed me how beautiful our country is it's so diverse so beautiful and you will you'll not believe that i stopped going to foreign country i don't visit foreign countries now because india itself is so huge and so vivid and so diverse that one lifetime is not enough and i have yet to see some part of still <laughs> okay yes. so we are going to chase butterflies right and discover and not only you know with with butterflies i could see other wildlife also that that also i'm going to share and every place is different butterflies different uh, habitat different plant butterfly plants animals bird everything was different india is so diverse i'm so excited so basically i'm going to tell a story of lepidoptera the scaly winged insect this is a uh, not a butterfly but a moth a moon moth and basically look at the antenna and that's a very uh, specialized antenna where actually this is a male and with this antenna it can locate a female almost a kilometer away you can imagine you know it's, it's almost like in um, a sort of a radar that it can locate and they are like a guided missile they home towards a female when they emerge from their cocoon so you know it's an am- amazing uh, naturalist they have these insects we rarely look into it but if you see it's it's truly uh, something which uh, it it amazes you and basically moths are the first to evolve you know on this earth before butterflies and they are all moon worshipers and they come out in the darkness actually they come out in the night mainly because you know they want to avoid being eaten up in the daytime when a lot of predators are active you know were especially birds are hungry and active so they want to remain hidden and move in the night in the cloak of darkness but of course they have to go back and sleep in the daytime when everybody can see and that's the time lot of that's the reason why moths are more you know drab colored camouflage so they you can't spot them they they look like a, a dry leaves or dry twigs and you you won't believe that you know moths are 10 times more than butterflies butterfly and these are the moths some are colorful some are not but some are amazingly colorful and huge like atlas moth the largest moth in the world that's also found in india and these are some of the moths just to give an example don't worry don't and don't worry uh, don't try, try to remember names i'm not teach you anything just enjoy so uh, these are some of the moths and butterflies are different because butterflies are diurnal means they fly during the day time while moths are nocturnal and moths have antenna which is hairy feather uh, feather like you saw, i showed you but may, butterflies never have an antenna which is feathery or or hairy they have a hairy antenna but always there's a knob at the end look at this uh, 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 t- uh, tip of this antenna this is a butterfly antenna and all butterflies and moths are basically don't have chewing mouth parts they have straw like mouth part that means they can only suck liquids no solid food that's why and that's the reason they go for nectars or other juices or body fluids of dead animals but they they can't eat solid food and that's the reason they also visit flowers and that's very important because they are very in, in one of the major pollinators also and and the food prefer you'll be surprised that some butterflies don't even visit flowers they'll rather go to a dead crab or a rotting overripe uh, fruit fallen from the tree or a human sweat or urine dung but not flowers i'll be surprised that's a butterfly on the uh, right it's a uh, blue bottle sitting on a dead crab whereas there is a lime butterfly on a flower so that's and because many of the butterflies require salts and these salts are not available in the nectar 
and these salts are available in the dead animals and in the in the urine sweat animal dung uh, bird dropping so that's where they require and they go for that so that's another uh, secret with a lot of people didn't know and colors of course we are fascinated by the colors of these butterflies that's why we fall in love with butterflies but we'll be surprised that there are some colors are there and you see them like the blue on the left but the the shiny the glittering ones actually the color doesn't exist at all it is not there at all this is only you are seeing it seeing into inverted commas you must have seen water uh, bubbles you know soap bubbles showing they're all uh, beautiful, beautiful iridescent colors and you must have seen the petrol on water you know floating petrol floating on the water it shows all the iridescence that is a scattering of light it's an effect the light falling on that surface and that gives an illusion of colors colors don't exist as pigment similarly butterfly scales also are made that way that they emit certain wavelengths that you see the colors but they don't actually have a pigment so this is a the the right butterfly is called a common peacock and all the shining color are actually not pigment but the they are called a structural colors caused by the structure on the scales so if you see the butterfly wings under a microscope they look like roof tiles and these are the roof tiles the scales give the colors to the butterflies one is the real pigment in the scales and one is the structural color so two types of colors you either have and of course butterflies evolved with the flowering plants on this earth and they are very closely related most of them actually uh, visit flowers and they are important pollinators after bees butterflies are important pollinators but some are not some do not visit flowers at all but they do uh, other like they visit other uh, 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 dead uh, dead crab or a, a, a dead snake on the road or animal urine dung whatever they find but not flowers but majority of them are evolved with the flowering plants and especially butterflies lay eggs on plants and each butterfly has got a specific host plant they will not lay on any green plant like the common mormon will lay only on kadipatta or lemon plant but not on uh, you give them a coriander or you give them a, um, a palak no no they will not eat so that's very specific the, the caterpillars are very very fussy they'll rather die than eat something that they don't eat normally they can't digest so basically you know world over you can see there are something like 174000 butterfly species and moths and out of that, only 18,000 are butterflies. The rest are all moths. That means moths are 10 times more than butterflies. And India has got about more than 1,300, uh, uh, 1300 species of butterflies. Hmm? Uh, more than about 1,300. And butterflies, a scientist, the biologists have classified them into six families. And I'm going to show you those families as we proceed. So they are skippers, swallowtails, whites and yellows, blues, Punches and Judies and brush footed butterflies. So these are the six groups. And let's move to the uh, groups I'll show you. First, we move to swallowtails. They're very handsome butterflies. And look at the hind wing of this uh, common rose. It has got extension. That extension is called a swallowtail. Of course, all swallowtails don't have extensions. But like the common jay doesn't have an extension. But most of the but butterflies in this group has got extension. That's what they call swallowtails. You must see the bird called swallow. And they have long tails. That's the reason why this butterfly also has been given the name swallowtail. Like they have an extension of the tail of the hind wings, just like the swallowtails have. Then we come to skippers. Skippers, uh, many of them are drab and moth-like, but they are butterflies very much. Look at the antenna. The antenna is slightly hooked, but they're always knobbed at the end. Not feathery, not hair-like. Hair-like, but always slightly swollen at the tip. So that makes them very much a butterfly. Skippers are very, very uh, active and they, are, they, they love flowers and they visit flowers um, very frequently. And that's where you can find them and photograph them also. And then we come to whites and yellows, another one of the brightest and beautiful uh, butterflies. But you'll be surprised that this common Jezebel on the right, which looks very beautiful, show it to a bird. The bird will say yuck. Why? Because actually this butterfly, when it was a caterpillar, it has, it has fed on a poisonous plants. It could not only digest the poison, but it, it has retained the poison in the body. In the caterpillar body and when it emerged as an adult winged adult that poison still remains in the body and the presence of the poison is indicated by the bright colors these bright colors are not beautiful but they are warning colors and birds soon learn to keep up from this brightly colored butterflies because that poison actually whenever a bird a new bird makes a mistake of attacking this brightly colored butterfly it comes in contact with the body juices of this butterfly and that is the the toxic po the poison it doesn't kill because killing is the loss, the education loss. 
the birds get educated the bird starts vomiting retching it gets a palpitation it starts shivering and then never again will touch this butterfly it gets a lesson of the life it is a hard way but it learns this way so these are these are basically this is the way the butterflies defend themselves in a very non violent way it doesn't kill just educates its predators and the uh, common grass yellow is very common basically we have seen this so these are the groups the whites and yellows they are very 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 specific groups which will most of the butterflies are yellows and whites in this group that's why it's called whites and yellows then we come to blues blues are as you know some many of them are as small as your little finger's nail they are not more than that and they usually flutter around the roadside in the forest paths and many of them have a tails also and a false you know a look head like a, a, a dark spot that is basically a decoy to look to have a false antenna and a false head is basically sar salamat to pagdi pachas you know you have to protect your head so you have to have a decoy wherever there is attack the attack will be on the tail side the real head is on this on the on the uh, left side and the decoy is on the right side so many time when you approach this butterfly it starts moving its hind legs to attract the predator's attention towards the less vulnerable part of the body that's how this kind of adaptation the butterflies have to protect themselves so that's a common cerulean now you can see in the season in common hedge blue right in the mumbai city you will see it in and around uh, uh, other city like pune or in chennai also you can see them and then you have the judies and punches that's another uh, beautiful group we have of course judies are mainly mainly found in south india and majority of judies and other punches are found in the northeast and north india in the himalayas and the northeast but not in the south india the basically you find mainly the uh, plum judies here and then we got another group beautiful but of a group called the brush footed butterflies so friends uh, this is another beautiful group we have of the brush footed butterflies and here you have baronet now it's very commonly seen in the gaudy baron and you will surprise you know when these who gave these names these names are given by the british officers basically you know they were uh, actually uh, uh, when they were stationed in india that was a hobby was there to collect butterflies actually they used to catch and kill them and pin them and that's the time they gave these names to uh, butterflies and that's how we got all these names of the Gaudy Baron, the Baronet, <coughs> and the Sore Tails, <coughs> and this they studied also. They did, did a serious studies of the butterflies also. They wrote books then, because that was the fashion then to collect butterflies and to study and to pin them and to have a collection. And when the uh, many of them uh, took back the collections to, and now they are in British Museum. Majority of them, of course, we do have here in India, but they took majority of that collection. And I, you can see now why we have so many butterflies. You know. if you go to england and ask them how many butterflies um they have they will proudly say 47 species and you come to india and you see how many we have 1300 species almost that is because we have got so much a diversity look at the you know we have got 10 biogeographic zones right from starting from himalayas from uh, arunachal pradesh you have assam then you have got central india then you have the western ghats then you have the andaman islands so it's an amazing and then india is one of the 17 among the 17 mega diverse countries not all countries are blessed with this biodiversity that we have and we have two hot places where we have beautiful biodiversity like animals bird insects one is of course the northeast right from starting from sikkim and eastward sikkim assam meghalaya arunachal pradesh nagaland that northeast and then we have the western ghats right from south of gujarat going down south up to tamil nadu and kerala so that is an amazing diversity we have and that's why we have so many of different uh, species now we start our journey exploring india right from the ladakh and we are in the trans himalayan region trans himalayan region means beyond himalayas and that's the uh, uh, sindhu river right and you can see it's all barren there is no forest there trees are there but they hardly grow above your knees and that's But there also you can see butterflies and event there because some of the butterflies fly about ten thousand feet, and even the lakes are there. But lakes, many of the lakes are brackish; they're salt water. That's the reason why, because once upon a time Himalayas were possibly under was under the sea, and now they are rose, and you have still have the lakes which are salty. And a lot of birds from Mumbai they fly out to uh, Himalayas to breed there actually in the in the July, August, September, and they come back in the winter. 
to avoid the harsh winter there and they spend the winter in Mumbai, they go back to Himalayas again to breed there. That's a place, Somori Lake. And that's the top predator. You have tigers and lions, elephants there in Himalayas, but we have another predator called a snow leopard. And of course, nowadays we are getting good pictures and good sightings of snow leopard. People have been it's a very successful in spite sight uh, spotting the snow leopards in the Himalayas. And this is one of the top predators. Of course, I have not photographed this in the wild. It's a zoo photograph. But yes, I hope to see this uh, top predator in Ladakh. One uh, That's on a wish list. I have not seen it. But of course, uh, I, had, I had to go there for different reason actually. And I then I found a desert in Himalaya. That's a Nubra desert, right? Can you imagine? Not only desert, but even camels also. These are the double. Uh, these are not double hump camels. They are single hump. Uh, these are double hump camel. The bacterian camels, and not the camels you see in Rajasthan. These are possibly brought in by the Mongolian traders who used to trade from uh, uh, these passes coming to India, and even the invaders came through these passes. And that was the, that's a Nubra desert in the Himalayas. Imagine a desert right in the Himalayas, and there you have this handsome Tibetan wild ass. You know. If you are there in Himalaya, in the in the Ladakh, you, for the first two days, you have to just lie down and get acclimatized, actually. Because at 10,000 feet, if you start running around, you'll start suffering from headache and nausea and possibly to go back to Delhi. So that's the reason you have to actually get acclimatized and you wait till your body gets used to it. But these animals, if you see them running at a speed, you can imagine the lung power with that rarefied air at 10,000 feet. And these are the handsome Kiang or the Tibetan wild ass I saw. Of course, I was there for a different reason. And that was this butterfly. I see, see this arrow at the bottom of the right. That's uh, the Apollo butterfly. Because I was you know, commissioned by the BNH to write a book on butterflies. I said, I'm not going to sit in the library and, and copy from other books and write a book. I want to actually go there, see the butterflies, photograph them, and then write a book. And of course, that took me 10 years to write a book for my first book. Because discovering, exploring, writing, it takes time. And it, India is a huge country. And very diverse too. And these are the two butterflies I found there. The, the common red Apollo and the regal Apollo. These are the butterflies found only about 10,000 feet only. no Nothing below. So I have to go about 10,000. I went up to 10,000. I went up to Khardugla Pass. And there I found these butterflies. And I was overjoyed when I found it. So it was a dream actually to actually photograph them. I was shivering when to, I saw this and I was photographing them. Of course, there are small other butterflies there in the blue, some of these golden copper or the common made of blue, which you find in Kashmir also. So, so these are the smaller butterflies and, the, and some of these nymphalids called the high brown fitlery or the silver pot or the Ladakh tortoise shell. The tortoise shell found only Ladakh region, mainly that's why it's called Ladakh tortoise shell. Tortoise shell is also found in the England. That's a different tortoise shell, of course, the common tortoise shell. But here we have uh, this Ladakh tortoise shell. We have another Kashmir tortoise shell also here. Now we cross over the Himalayas to the better part. You can see the pine trees and the fir and the uh, cheer pines and junipers and other places and tall trees, but they are different. They don't have broad leaves. They have cone, needle-like leaves because they have to survive in this harsh winter. And even the afternoon temperatures are become very, very hot. It can actually you can get a black nose if you are not properly protected with a good sunscreen. Here in Himalaya, you can get a black, your entire skin will start peeling from your nose first. <laughs> but these trees are specially adapted to that kind of to extreme hot and extreme cold. But most of the these are adapted to cold, extreme cold region where the sun, snowfall is there. And there, if you happen to go in April, May, June, the entire Himalayas, right from Kashmir to Arunachal Pradesh, entire Himalaya is set ablaze with these flowers, beautiful flowers. And that you can see uh, uh, across the Himalayas in in the and that's a that's a spring season actually. That's a spring season in Himalayas, and that's time you can see orchids also. And you can see a Himalayan black bear too, of course. But of course, <laughs> these bears are huge and strong. I this is, I had photographed in the Himalaya, in the Sikkim Zoo, but they are different. They are not a sloth bear you see in uh, Ranthambore or Kana. These are different and very trim and very strong bears. And with a V mark on their neck below the chest. Just to show that different kinds of animals found at different habitats. And there also, the, I saw the skippers there. This is a spotted snow flat. Why it is called snow flat? Because it has a white patch on its hind wings. This is called snow, snow flat. And the straight swift. Why it is called straight swift? Because these spots are arranged in a row. The spots. That's why it is called straight swift. Like a straight line. You know, these names, I said, they were, they were given by the British officers who used to collect, that was the 
hobby during the time when British officers were posted in India. And then, of course, I found another Apollo called the Blue Apollo. This Apollo flies a slightly lower altitude at about 8,000 feet or 9,000 feet. And I was overjoyed when I found this blue, common blue Apollo. I wanted to photograph this also. It was on my wish list. And another handsome butterfly I found was a yellow swallowtail. That's like another beautiful butterfly you find in the Himalayas. You find them in the in Russia also. You find them in the Europe also. Of course, there are different subspecies. But yes, they are found in the Himalayas. Because Himalayan has got a climate that is like Europe-like climate. So you have very similar fauna. It's found in the European and, and uh, Trans-Asian uh, region. And then we found this red bodied swallowtail. They are not the common rose and crimson rose you see around Mumbai. But they had extra long tail. And one is called a common windmill. And another one is slightly bigger. It's called greater windmill. And they move very slowly. Why slowly? Because they are they have got red bright colors. I have told you about warning colors. Because they move very slowly, fly very slowly because they want to show boss. Have a look. I am distasteful. I can cause, give you a bad tummy, bad uh, uh, palpitation and nausea. So birds should learn to keep up from these butterflies and these butterflies always fly slowly to display their warning colors. And these are found in the Himalayas. And it's an amazing sight to watch. There. They glide slowly in the Himalayan valleys and come to the flowers. And then there are these black veins. You see the white is called black veins. You see the veins, the black veins, the black markings are there. And another Himalayan brimstone. You can see the common brimstone in Europe also. And you can see the Himalayan brimstone in, if you go to Kulu Manali or even Sikkim, you can see them on the Himalayan mountains. And then some butterflies are very drab colored. Why? Because they are not found among flowers and meadows, but they are, they are found among the rocks. And they have this very different color because they remain almost invisible among the rocks. It's only when you go close and take photograph, you can see, oh, there is a butterfly here. That's a white edge rock. But see the pattern. The pattern is different. It, it breaks the body optically, so you can't actually spot the butterfly immediately. That's how they survive. Because birds are very active and very hungry. They have to remain very, very uh, alert. And the great satyr. You know, you can imagine the kind of names the uh, these butterflies have. And these, butterf these butterflies found even in Pakistan, in China... And some of them in, in um, uh, Myanmar and Thailand. So all these names are common names are used by these same uh, countries. And that's how we recognize. Of course, there's a Latin name also, which is which is common internationally. That's That remains the constant uh, ident identification of butterflies. But there are common names which are used commonly in these countries. But, and these were named by the British officers. And then we come to the beaks. That's what the club beak. Why club beak? Because the, the, this pattern here is like a club. And the common beak has got the club broken here. That's the difference between this butterfly and this butterfly. You know, how, how the species differ, I'm just showing you the markings. So, to you to identify butterflies, you have to look at the markings. And the, based on the markings, the butterflies are identified. So, here you have the club beak. The club is intact here on the wing. The top wing you see here, club is intact. The club is broken here. That's called the common beak. And these are found in the Uti, in the South India, as well as up to Mathiran, you can see them in around Mumbai. And then you can see in the Himalayas. These are basically the hill butterflies, hill dwellers in the forest. Now we come to this little broader leaf. Let's see what animals and butterflies you see in this forest. Let's see. Oh, wow. You see the red panda. If you happen to go to Darjeeling and uh, on the Sikkim side, you can see the red panda. That's a cat bear. It's a more of a tree dweller. And there you see other butterflies also, different butterflies. That's another skippers again, but they are different. The green olet and the large white flat. It is much larger and what beautiful butterflies. You see here in the northeast. Now we are coming to the northeast now. And look at the sapphires. They are so beautiful. One is the golden sapphire, another one is green sapphire. And they are so beautiful that they look like almost, you know, earrings. You know, many would be, you know, tempted to pick them up and put them as earrings. <laughs> but again, these colors are structural. They are not the real colors. And in the sunlight and diffuse light, only you see this color. In the darkness, this color just disappears. Because there is no pigment, but just a refraction and reflection of light that causes this color to our eyes. And these are another beautiful butterfly. But these butterflies are as small as your finger, you know, your, your thumb, thumb, thumbnail. You can imagine the size. And then we come to another butterfly it's called the Eastern Courier. You know, male and female are different. Like in Eastern Courier, the, the left one is a male and the right one is a female. That's how some of the butterflies, the male and female, the color difference. And that's how you can make a difference between male and female. Some are very similar and very difficult to make out with which is a female and which is a male. Unless you ex examine them properly and female is much larger and which is with a fatter abdomen. 
otherwise uh, they look very similar another handsome butterfly we have the large silver stripe here again a himalayan butterfly and then we have the purple emperor Pur purple emperor has got this blue color which is actually changes according to the angle it moves so it's a, it's a structural color, not a real color. So as the light falls, the blue color changes. You know, different uh, hues of you know, shades of blue you see as the butterfly moves. And now we come to Ram, Ram, Ram Ganga River in the Corbett National Park. Let's see what you see in the Ram Ganga River and the Corbett National Park. Karyal, Karyal is a, is a basically fish eating crocodile. It doesn't attack human beings and it is it's basically a fish eating. It's endangered now and it has uh, been... Um, protected by the Wildlife Protection Act, which we have to protect lions and tigers and gharial also is protected. The male has got a big ghada, a, a sort of a, a pot-like thing, structure, that, that's what ghada, and it, it makes a sound during mating time or during the courtship time. And, and this is a male which I, we saw in the Ramaga River. And there we saw the elephants too. You know, elephants require huge forests. They don't stay in small forests. That's why we don't have forest uh, elephants in Maharashtra. Why? Because forests are not good enough to support elephants. Elephants need big continuous forest. If they stay at one place, they will, they will destroy the forest and they have to keep on moving. That's why elephants keep on moving between Kerala, Karnataka, Goa, then back again, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, they keep on moving. Because if they stay at one place, they will destroy the forest. But they also grow the forest because they are the one who disperse seed. And they are the real gardeners of the forest. The elephants are other animals. They bring up disperse the seeds and the flower forest comes up. But at the same time, they require huge tracts of forest. These elephants, of course, these elephants I saw in the Corbett National Park, they come down in the summer on the grasslands. And then we come to Tarai. Tarai region is the basically the forest in the foothills of Himalayas, in the, in the Bhutan and Sikkim and um, in the U Uttar Pradesh and uh, Uttar Pradesh region. Let's see what you see here. Wow. That's a golden langur. Not the uh, uh, langur you see uh, normally around... Uh, uh, the national park or other places in the zoo, but these are very rare, but uh, rare uh, uh, langur, which was discovered in 1957 by a tree planter called the EPG, and it is still rare, and it is found only in the area of in Bhutan and Manas, adjoining Assam, and nowhere else. That makes it a very exclusive but uh, animal and very rare and endangered species. And to see, you know, go on the border of Bhutan or or on the Assam border, we can see this. And it's more timid than the normal langur. Langur, the other, other langur might be a little aggressive, but this is very timid and very docile uh, langur. And of course, the rhino. Rhino is the mascot of the northeast, especially the Assam. But yes, and now uh, it has been translocated into Dwa also, so that we don't have, uh, you know, eggs in one basket. We have got good other... Uh, Forest also because this is endangered. It is possibly one of the remnant animals from the dinosaurs' age is possibly still alive and surviving precariously rather. But yes, it is safe because we have a special army people protecting this uh, animal in the Gaziranga National Park. And it's just not forest guard, but our, uh, the army has been deployed to protect this because they've been heavily poached for the why? Because the rhino horn is believed to have aphrodisiac property. That's the reason they've been killing this animal just for the little horn. And Northeast is another beautiful place. is a Mecca, actually, for, for the orchids. If you happen to go in month of April, May, in the forest, you can see so many different species of orchids. Of course, you have to search for them. And there are orchid festivals also in the Sikkim. And there are exhibitions there in the, where you can see amazing varieties of orchids brought together. And the forest there, especially in Arunachal Pradesh, is an amazing rainforest. You don't have to go to Brazil or Amazon to see the forest. We have the forest here in India. Right in Kerala also we have similar forest, rainforest, deep dark jungles, and in Arunachal Pradesh also you can see the amazing forest. And there you have hornbills because hornbills don't make nest on the trees like crows. They make nest inside the huge trees. They need to have huge trees to make a hole, and they remain inside. Their babies remain inside the hole, not on the tree like crows or other birds. So they require big trees, old trees, and a good forest. That's a wreath hornbill. And there also I found a lot of butterflies called the All King. It's a, it's a very handsome butterfly, glittering green, blue butterfly with orange tip. They are the end of the tail and the white black spots. And it, it's a habit of sitting under the leaf. And I was lucky to spot it and photograph it. And then we have the Great Swift. You know, the spots here on the, on the wing actually 
are actually the way you identify these butterflies. So the, the way the way the spots, two spots are, are are together, or two spots are not there, or one only one spot is there, or three spots are in line. All these actually help in identifying butterflies. So it makes sometimes very difficult, and many times beginner might be scared and little uh, discouraged. But yes, that's a challenge to learn about butterflies if you really are serious about learning about butterflies and the identification. Especially skippers are very difficult to start with. And then we have another beautiful butterfly called the dragon tails. So on the left, it is the white dragon tail, and on the right, it is the green dragon. This green, the, the, the stri stripe here is greenish on the right. That's the green dragon, dragon tails. You know, first I thought they were all about dragonflies, but they are not dragonflies, they are butterflies, and they are swallowtail butterflies. Another endangered butterfly I found was a Bhutan glory. A Bhutan glory is another handsome butterfly, is protected on the Wildlife Protection Act as much as the lion and tiger today. And other butterfly, I don't have the photograph here, that's a Kaiser Hin. It's another butterfly which is found only in, in the northeast, especially if you happen to go to Arunachal Pradesh, you are likely to see it. Many people have been posting on the Facebook also. They have seen it and photographed it. Another beautiful butterfly you can see in the Western Ghats also, as well as the North is called a five bar short tail. Why five bar short tail? Count the black lines here from the base of the wings. So it's like, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Here, these five lines are here. Here on the up to the cell region. This is a cell region here. So whatever lines are in the cell are called, counted and they're called five bar short tail. And then we came more solar tails called a chain sort tail. Why it is called chain sort tail? Because the pattern here actually is like a chain like pattern here. So that's why it's called chain sort tail. And sort tail because the hind wing is, is pointed like a sword. And then we have the J's. We have common J's, blue J's, and uh, tail J's. So this is Wayne J. Why Wayne J? Because the black lines are very prominent here on this. And then we come to the golden bird wing. That's another large butterfly like the. Uh, Southern bird wing we have in South India. We have golden bird wing in North India and common bird wing. There are two bird wings in this North India. One is common bird wing and another one is golden bird wing. The difference between golden bird wing, the female has got white lines along the veins uh, on the wings and this male has got a black dusting. You know, here on the hind wing is a black dusting. That, that identifies the golden bird wing from the common bird wing. This is how we people uh, identify butterflies. And then we come to whites and yellows. Whites and yellows are another beautiful butterflies. And many of them look alike. Many you know, the Jezebels are distasteful, but sawtooths are not distasteful. But sawtooth mimic, they look like the distasteful butterflies. That's why they also get the same protection. Because butterflies, birds can't make out a difference. And birds will ignore both of them. You know, saying that possibly imagining that they possibly are distasteful. So that's, uh, that's another uh, uh, phenomenon we see in the butterfly called mimicry. Many of the distasteful butterflies are made by but butterflies which are not distasteful. They don't have the capacity to digest poison and store them, but they have the capacity to actually they evolve to look like a distasteful species. And birds get confused and they leave them both away. They stay away from both of them. That's how the mimicry works in nature. Then we come another beautiful butterfly is called the silver lines. You know the, why they're called silver line. Look at these lines. Lines here has got a silver here between the red. Here also you see the club silver line. It's called the silver here. And why club line? Club silver line because there's a, here there's a club here, club like marking here at the base of the wing. Here also there is a club like marking, but it is it has got too many lines other than spots together. So it's not isolated. But the, and there's a long line here, and the other lines meet here. That's why it's got long banded. And you know, these are all names given by the British officers to identify butterflies. And today also all the butterfly guys in, and there are 40 butterfly groups in Facebook, right? From butterflies of Pakistan, butterflies of Bangladesh, butterflies of Nepal, butterflies of Bhutan, butterflies of Maharashtra, butterflies of Tamil Nadu. And we don't discuss politics. We only talk about butterflies. You can also check out and see how <laughs> active we are. And so many butterfly people are, for, you know, upload pictures and share with each other. Amazing. It's so so peaceful there. We don't talk about politics. No war in on, on butterfly groups. <laughs> and we have the punches here. You know, punches are found only in the northeast. And these are small butterflies. And they are very fast moving butterflies. And they are found only in the northeast. They don't have tails like, a tail like the um, uh, uh, long band. But they are a different group. Like they, they belong to the group of plum judies. And then we come to nymphalids, some of the crows. Here in Mumbai, you see the black, they are black colored. But in Himalayas, they have blue colors. 
and they move in a such a beautiful the light and the uh, shadow area and the blue color flashes it's amazing to see these colors and they are distasteful again birds don't eat this uh, butterfly they don't attack this butterfly because these are the warning colors and crows as such they feed on distasteful plants in the in the caterpillar stage and they harbor poison in their body poison is not to kill just to give a distasteful experience for the birds birds survive and will never again touch this butterfly there are some butterflies like the tiger palm fly has got a pattern which lives which can merge with the dead leaf and if it sits among the dead leaf you can't see it and that's another butterfly called the jezebel palm fly it tries to look like a distasteful jezebel that's also palm fly but a different palm fly and then in the deep dark jungle some of the butterflies are not found in sunny patches or the grasslands but you have to go in deep dark jungles and in, and infested with leeches the blood sucking leeches are falling from the trees also and whenever we go to arunachal we have to have the leech socks and we put take salt and we took take tobacco to get rid of leeches but still leeches get us but that's the price we pay for getting these handsome butterflies and these like striped ringlet and the and the jungle glory are found in the dark deep jungles of arunachal pradesh and now we come to sundarbans the the mangrove forest that we share with bangladesh and that's where we travel in the boat sometimes we stay on the boat also to, and and the mangroves are extensive and channels are extensive and quite huge and that's where i saw the tiger here of course it's not easy to see tiger in sundarbans actually i had been almost seven times and saw almost only twice i saw tiger otherwise is it is easy to see tiger in uh, maharashtra or madhya pradesh in tadoba or kana but not in sundarbans but i was lucky to see and tiger was actually watching came out and we were we were in the boat but the tiger actually came actually for some other reason it had actually spotted a deer and almost rare went for the deer but this time a deer was lucky and deer escaped it's not easy for a tiger every time or lucky it has really worked hard for his lunch but there i had gone to see another tiger called the white tiger this butterfly is found only in the mangroves of sundarbans and odisha and i was writing a book and i wanted to have this butterfly in my book and finally in sundarbans i found this butterfly and i photographed it that was a tiger i was after in sundarbans not the the real big tiger that's a white tiger of sundarbans and of course sundarbans you can see that the saltwater crocodile this was almost 20 25 uh, feet long but um, just basking there we were in the winter there and they were basking and i, I could go almost 10 feet near to photograph this so that's the beauty when you are traveling in india you have so much diversity so much of you know surprises you see and then you have the ghorpad but this is not a ghorpad we have in maharashtra that is the which was used by tanaji malusare to scale the kondana fort but this is a water monitor this found is found only in odisha and in west bengal and it becomes really huge almost like a komodo dragon but komodo dragon is much more bigger and stronger of course but this is a relative of komodo dragon it is found in sundarbans the wa- this is water monitor it can swim and it fish also crabs snakes birds whatever it can take on and can climb trees also and of course sundarban was good for birds also some of the birds i saw which i don't see other other places that are like brown red kingfisher or you have the collared kingfisher here and we nothing else than we i saw watch the crabs the beautiful red crabs came out in the low tide and of course each male had a territory and often they fought together the loser had to go back in the hole and only the winner had can has a command over the area and the fiddler crabs have got one large craw and one small claw craw and they keep on waving and signaling you can see them in the actually in mumbai uh, in in bandra and other places also but those are different colors and they are smaller but these are um, orange which you find only in the sundarbans and odisha region and now from the west from the east we come to the west we are in the thar desert but in the scorching desert also you see some butterflies let's see what butterflies seen in the scorching desert that's a large salmon arab yes we call them arabs because found they are found in desert but of course this salmon arab is found in the arid regions of india like in tamil nadu or andhra pradesh and in maharashtra they are found not just in rajasthan or gujarat but that's the butterflies are mainly found in the in the desert region of rajasthan and um, gujarat and then we have small orange tip also found in the uh, desert region very brightly colored pretty butterfly but found in the drier regions of india and now we come to the sal forest the central india is a land of the tiger and this is not sag sag not teak tree this is sal sal is a very strong tree very large huge and it say that sau sal khada sau sal pada or sau sal sada you know it's so strong many of the railway lines you know were laid with the slippers made from the salt tree which is very strong and very uh, 
it, it is very it doesn't wear off easily and doesn't eat, it's not eaten by termites also and this is sal forest of the madhya pradesh the central india and that's where you see the tiger right in the open gypsy nowhere in the world you can see tiger like this in open gypsy only in india you can see it why because we have protected it our forest department has been really successful in protecting this tiger where else malaysia and other places they eaten up the tiger the chinese have eaten up the tiger and they and still they want to eat up our tigers also but here we are protected and you can see the tourist you know open gypsy this is not zoo this was in in bandogad national park you can see in tadob also like this and and now tiger is not just a wild animal it's a industry the tourist industry so many people are livelihood are depend on tiger and there are, there are gypsy wala there are there are guide forest guides are there there are resorts big resorts have come five star resorts have come just for the tiger it's a industry and tiger is going to survive because it brings lot of tourism also and money to the country just not an wild animal so that means and of course government of india has also taken lot of uh, trouble to be launching a project tiger which was very successful and we have tiger which no other country has that kind of tiger of course nepal has bangladesh has but not like this of course now we come to small as birds of uh, some of the grasslands look at the bill this is not a dal chawal khane wala you know bird it is a insectivorous bird may you will be surprised majority of birds are actually uh uh this are insectivorous not everybody eats dal chawal and look, while look just looking at the bill only will make out that they don't they can't eat grains and they are the major predators of birds and uh, butterflies and other insects and striped tiger there's another beautiful butterfly found it almost looks like Amer american monarch but this is found in india of course in mumbai and it is known to migrate actually it migrates from western ghats to eastern ghats towards eastern ghats in the monsoon and then comes back after the monsoon is over it comes back to western ghats but it is not the same butterfly that comes back it is possibly third or fifth generation that come back to the same place where its ancestor were there now who told them to come back same place that's another genetic possibly a uh, a makeup that possibly that makes them to come back to same place otherwise the is still a mystery how they can they know that they had to come back to the same place where the ancestors lived so this migration happens in india also it is not only happening in mexico or america but uh, butterflies migrate from western ghats to eastern ghats and from himalayas from top of the himalayas to to the base the himalayas during the winter so migrate but of course in india the studies are yet to be done more in details they are not done, done like we have done worked on 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 birds birds of course birds live longer we have a ring and we found one bird coming from siberia 14 times to india but butterflies have a short life and they migrate in generations what goes to from western ghats to eastern ghats third or fifth generation returns back so that's the difference between bird migration and butterfly migration and what are these these are all all males and these are the males of the spot sort tail and they are all on a wet patch why they are thirsty no they are not thirsty but they are on a wet patch trying to suck up moisture why because they want to suck up the dissolved minerals and salts why because that's a dowry they have to collect you know female butterflies need the salts which they don't get from nectar now who collects the salt the males collect the salt and then the female will select the saltiest male the saltiest male gets the female And this is how there's all fighting so much. Even the sometimes there's a fluttering of wings, and they push and pull and push uh, other competitors, and they want to have as much as salt they can because they can they can they can get a uh, get married fast. And these salts are passed to the female during the mating time, and that makes her egg viable. So whenever you see a lot of butterflies sitting on a damp patch, it is not that they're thirsty. They are all seeking the salts which are necessary to pass it on the female and make her eggs viable during mating time. And now we come to the Western Ghats. It's a unique ecosystem we have right from the South Gujarat to Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, and up to Tamil Nadu. We have an unique the animals, birds here are unique found nowhere in the world. And we have the shakru or the giant squirrel, Malabar giant squirrel found here, and it's an amazing animal that you see. It's found only in the forest. It cannot come and stay in the on the land. So when, when the forest goes, this animal goes, and that's a state animal of Maharashtra now. then we have the prince of the jungle called the of course the the leopard we have in national park yeah right in the middle of the mumbai city we have leopard in the sanjay gandhi national park with the pin code also <laughs> so that's amazing it, it has stuck it because it, it it is not act fussy as tiger tiger has not survived in mumbai it went off long back but leopards have survived because leopard are not fussy they eat anything they eat rats also cats also crabs also and dogs also and nothing else than humans also 
<laughs> but yes, they are still surviving tenaciously rather, but yes, they still survive very tenaciously among the human uh, uh, dwellings. That's the prince of the jungle. And we have now the southern bird, the largest butterfly in India, found in the southern Maharashtra, in the western Ghats only. Southern Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. You'll find this beautiful, handsome butterfly up to 190 mm. The wingspan is there. And then we have the smallest butterfly called the grass jewel, as small as your little finger nail. You can find in Mumbai also, in Pune also, Chennai also, in Delhi also. That's a beautiful butterfly, small butterfly called the grass jewel. The smallest butterfly, about 14 mm, only 14 mm. That's 190 mm, largest. And then we have some of the handsome butterflies. You know, all these names were given by commander, uh, by the army officers. They all, most of the butterfly names are about commander, commodore, sergeant, uh, that kind of uh, sergeant major, that kind of, because they were all army officers and that's why they could actually give their own, they were familiar with their own ranks. That's how they gave these names to the butterflies also. And this butterfly is found in... Uh, cities also now because many of the host plant, the kadam tree is planted and this butterfly lays eggs on kadam trees. That's how we find this butterfly is more common in the areas where kadam trees are there. Another handsome butterfly you see in the Western Ghats. We happen to go to South Maharashtra, Goa, Kerala. This beautiful butterfly, you see, it's an amazing sight to watch this beautiful butterfly, you know, moving in the forest and coming to this um, flowers. And I was lucky to photograph this also. And then we have another uh, rare and uh, butterfly. It's, it's a large butterfly called a tree nymph. It almost looks like a paper you know, floating in the air. But you, you see clearly it's not a paper, but it's basically a butterfly. You know, it's just sailing in the air in the wind slowly. And that's the, called a tree nymph. It's again a forest butterfly. These are forest dwelling butterflies. They don't come in cities. So the forest ecosystem is very important for them to survive. The forest goes, the butterflies goes. Now we come to Andaman Islands. The forest on the top of the land and there is forest under the sea also. The corals and the, the fishes and the crabs and amazing. And the water, the blue but water is so beautiful, so tempting to snorkel and go for scuba diving. And there I went to see this butterfly. This butterfly found only in Andaman Islands and I had to get this butterfly and I got it in Andaman Islands because this is endemic only to Andaman Islands, nowhere else in the world. And I was after this butterfly and found it luckily. And I could include this in my book. And there's another butterfly called the Andaman club tail. Why club tail? Because look at the end of the tip of the ta tail. They're club-like. That's why named Andaman club tail. Found only in Andamans. And I found it there. Another beautiful butterfly called the painted Jezebel. Of course, we have the common Jezebel in the city of Mumbai also or Pune. But this butterfly, it looks like similar, but it's slightly different from the uh, common Jezebel. And found in Northeast as well as Andaman Islands. You know, butterflies usually you don't uh, mate with other species. You know, butterf each butterfly species is like a cat, dog, and bear. They are not all same species. They are not related to, like, they, they are different species, species are different as well. They don't mate also with each other. Rarely they do sometimes, by mistake sometimes, but, but progeny is not fertile. Now, here is a red PRO mating, and it's, it might stay there in this stage for possibly a couple of hours. And then the female will start looking for a host plant, which is very specific. Now, this butterfly will lay only on the the bryophyllum or the pan footy or the patar chart, you know, the, the, the plant which we sometimes are used, uh, it break the leaf and the, there are, this leaf itself will on the border of the new plant that's come. So that, this butterfly will lay in only on that. And then the passion flower is attracts the tawny costa to lay eggs. And look at it, she lays in a row. Some butterflies lay only one egg at a time and some butterflies lay so many eggs at a time. And then this is egg of a common of the uh, common rose. And let's see what happens. Within, within three days, the, the caterpillar develops within the egg and the caterpillar eats the eggshell from within and comes out. And then it's hungry. It's, it's, it, it's almost like an eating machine. It, it has to grow faster before the birds get it. And grows fat. And then it starts looking for a suitable place to hang and pupate. And when it finds a place, it hangs itself. It weaves a silken pad at the base and then a silken girdle to support itself. And then, now the legs are not required, the mouth parts are not required, now the new entity has been formed. This is second birth of a butterfly. Let's see what happens. In the middle of the night, the butterfly, the, 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 the caterpillar starts moving and the, the skin comes out. See, the skin comes out, another, another entity comes out and that's a pupa of the butterfly. And the skin is discarded soon. And you have so the pupa and the pupa waits here. 
and after and within the pupa the magic starts place all it, the old organs start dissolving and from the creepy crawly caterpillar a butterfly is born and on the 14th or 15th day the butterfly is ready to come and let's see what happens and then you see somebody peeping out from the pupa somebody wants to come out let's see who comes out and slowly the butterfly pushes the flap and comes out pushes and comes out but it's all crumpled the wings are crumpled and the abdomen is swollen with the butterfly wing and then the butterfly blood starts pumping in the wings let's see and slowly the wings start expanding otherwise they are wet and limp it can't fly it's most vulnerable stage in the butterfly's life and usually it happens in the morning and slowly the wings open and butterfly is ready within half an hour the butterfly is ready and to take off that's the second life of butterfly the first life was a caterpillar creepy crawly and now has adult it flies off but of course to stay in a pupal stage it stays for maybe sometimes 15 days 8 days or sometimes month also it is remain invisible now here you see the cat the pupa of the com common mime looks like a broken twig this is a real twig and this is a, this is a pupa of the so it it looks almost like a broken twig and it can that's why it remain invisible so the birds or other animals can't detect it presence because wait only the silken girdle here because the black girdle here, it it gives away the presence of a pupa otherwise it looks like a broken twig and some like the crows have a shining pupa why because they warn boss if you touch me you will have a bad stomach so they this shining pupa actually is warning the predators to keep off kids it has got a poisonous content it can it can give a bad stomach and nausea so birds who learn to keep off from the shining object but they are so shiny and so beautiful they look like earrings actually and some butterfly caterpillars actually stay within the 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 succulent fat leaves within the leaves and they hide it and they keep this is the droppings of the caterpillar and this is a caterpillar moving eating but staying within the two surfaces of the leaf you can't see it from the top you can't see it from the bottom also only when it wants to pupate it comes out otherwise it stays hidden and safe within the leaf surface that's the strategies the butterflies use and look at this that's a barren butterfly it's sitting uh, of a caterpillar of a barren butterfly and it's sitting in the middle of a leaf and it has got a feather like structure feather like structure means no shadows ground hugging and the central line aligned with the central line of the um, uh, midrib of the leaf also so it give almost visible so this kind of behavior actually makes it uh, survive and remains invisible to the daytime from the hungry birds even the army uh, structures have low roof the low roof is low, no shadows you can't be spotted from the top this this is the same uh, way the butterfly uh, this have got this kind of fish bone like structure to avoid being detected and then we have the oak leaf butterfly you know look at the nature how it sculpts it is exactly like a leaf and when this oak leaf butterfly is found in the southern india this is the orange butterfly found in north india in south india you have the blue oak leaf you know when the bird comes near it flies it flies blue 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 orange blue orange and then it again goes and becomes a leaf brown leaf the bird is still searching for a blue orange butterfly it can't see so it has closed its wing and become a leaf that's a strategy how it fools a bird and then you have this Uh, silver line, which has got a false antenna and false head that, at the end. So as I told you, sir, salamat to pagdi pachas. You know, have a false head, and if you come near this butterfly, it starts you know moving this hind wings to to attract the predator's attention towards less vulnerable part of the body. That's a tail. That if you know losing bits of tail and wing doesn't harm the butterfly. It can still survive for a couple of months. And that is what is the lifespan of butterfly is a couple of months. and then we have a false eyes and false at the at the border if this attack the attack will be on the edges of the wings so it's basically attracting the predator to attack here so the main body and head is safe that's how this is a common evening brown which has got these eye like markings of course life of butterfly is not easy actually you have a lizard waiting or a, or a toad or a tree frog or even a specialized wasp who goes and catches this caterpillars it 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 paralyzes them with venom and stores in its uh, in mud houses to feed its young ones so butterflies have a tough life it's not easy as we get up in the morning and go to office or school and sometimes so a specialized wasp which actually inject their eggs inside the caterpillar's body and then the the like a alien they come out from the caterpillar's body and weave the cocoons here you can see on the top left and then on the right also inside below you see the cottony structure it is basically this caterpillar the the wasp injected 
the eggs inside the body of the caterpillar. The caterpillar stayed alive. Nothing. It didn't look ill at all. Suddenly, out of the blue, they just came out, out of the body and started weaving cocoon out of the body. And um, then soon they emerge and they start infecting other caterpillars. Now, these caterpillars are now used as pesticides. People have realized that using real pesticides is bad because pesticides don't kill um, pest species, but affect the humans. So now elsewhere, actually, these kind of wasps, specialized wasps are released in the field. Like a, like a guided missiles to actually detect the caterpillars and kill. That's how they're using. They're using fungus, bacteria, and virus, and um, uh, wasp, and praying mantis to uh, ladybird, ladybird beetles to uh, tackle the pest problem, but not pesticide. Till today, not a single pest, pest species has gone extinct. Only thing the companies have brought pesticide after pesticide, stronger pesticide, stronger pesticide. Where the pesticide has gone? All the pesticide which are pumped on the food, on the grown, has come to us. Because we are on the top of the food chain, like a dinosaur, we are waiting there to go extinct almost. <laughs> because all the poisons which are sprayed on the crop come to us. And caterpillars and birds, uh, caterpillars and other butterflies soon, you know, get immune to these pesticides. We cannot. And some uh, caterpillars have a special organ called the osmeterium, actually. It has got a certain chemical which repel this wasp. The wasp which come to uh, lay eggs inside the caterp caterpillar body, it just... Um, the organ pops out and start giving a very pungent smell and repels the uh, attacking wasp. So this is the first insect repellent manufactured by insect itself to repel the wasp attack. And of course, spiders also are one of the major predators for the butterflies and other insects and keep the butterfly and other insects population down. But yes, birds are the major. Like look at the bill. This is the white black nip uh, monarch, or you have the uh, tickles Jerdon's uh, uh, fly uh, tickles uh, fly catcher here, and these are basically look at the bill. They are basically not grain eating, but dal chawal nahi khate. They are basically insectivorous, hundred percent insectivorous, and that's where they keep the insect population in control. And if you have these bird nesting around your field and crops, they'll control your pest species. So you always encourage such birds to nest around your crop by having good Hedges. But of course, the major problem is losing habitats. You know, we are losing forest at a very ra rapid rate. And that is causing a major problem, not only for animals, but for us also, because a lot of these forests are where the rivers are born. And rivers, fresh water is very important for us. Our civilization will survive only the well, there's a fresh water. We can't go to the sea to fetch water. And finally, we should re realize that we are part of this web, this precious web of life. We, we are not out of it. We are part of it. Something happens in the web of life, we are going to get affected. So we have to take care of the entire web of life, the, the little creatures that are there, because whatever affects them is going to affect us also. And then finally, we have to come back to a precious planet, beautiful Earth. And this is the only planet we have. We, we can't go anywhere else. And we have to really, really take care of this precious, beautiful planet we have, because we can't go to the Mars, can we? Thank you, friends. Thank you so much, Isaac. Very interesting talk, like a mini National Geographic series. <laughs> uh, I had a question for you. Uh, yes. Like, of, of maybe about two decades ago, there was a shortage of sparrows in the city and various citizens' yeah, yeah. initiatives happened Correct. to uh, bring back sparrows. And there are certain pockets of the city which are now having sp sparrow population. Can we do something similar for butterflies? Is it See, practical? Thing, Is it feasible? Thing, uh, yeah. See, first of all, why sparrows uh, actually uh, population diminished, diminished because you and me. Because our lifestyle changed. Now sparrows don't nest in our houses. Earlier when I was a kid, the sparrows used to come and nest in my uh, houses, in my kitchen or my Correct. bathroom. Now we have air-conditioned rooms, we have glasses and we have air-sealed um, houses. So they don't have a place to nest. And our houses have changed. We don't have tiles. We don't have the... Uh, other uh, uh, coverings and there are no and now we buy our atta from not from the chakki we don't go to chakki to grind our atta otherwise the ladies who sit outside the uh, uh, the floor uh, meals and they also clean the atta uh, and a lot of spillage is there and we have the baniya and a lot of uh, storage uh, selling these grains cool grains out where the sparrows to come now we have malls we get packed up so our lifestyle has changed so that has affected sparrows Butterflies also are, are, are affecting because now we have got more 
you know, plastic gardens, your lawns, and we've got beautiful foliage, but these don't actually help the ecology or the butterflies and birds. So we have to have the greenery, which is friendly and and not hostile to the uh, these butterflies. They should be friendly. So that's why we encourage butterfly gardening. You know, you can actually attract your butterflies right in your doorstep or your balcony if you have certain plants like lemon, kadi patta to start with. And you can have butterflies visiting your, your balcony even if you're on a 13th floor. So that's possible. But you have to have a, a garden that is friendly to birds and butterflies and not to have a plastic garden, which is not uh, doesn't attract butterflies or any uh, birds in your garden. And what would examples of friendly gardens be? Friendly garden means basically, you know, uh, like not to use pesticides in your garden. Avoid pesticide. But finally, pesticides are going to harm us also. So try to use something which is very friendly pesticide, like, like a soap water or a tobacco water. But nothing very uh, those deadly uh, chemical, chemical like rogor and all that, which are actually harmful to us and carcinogenics. So we have to avoid that. Another thing is that we have to have plants like, you know, fruit trees, something like the, uh, the guavas or sometimes, uh, you know, have kadi patta, lemon or... Uh, some of the flowering trees like lantana or uh, uh, some of these um, honeysuckles are there. So where you can attract the butterflies for that. So you have to plant these kind of plants which actually attract butterflies and birds. And mulberry is there, like mulberry attracts uh, birds eat. So this kind of makes them, so you can have bats also visiting your garden, birds also visiting the garden, and butterflies, if you like. Some people don't like, but if you like, you want to have, you can have it like that. Now, you know, if your, your plants get eaten up, uh, at the time, but that's a little small price you have to pay, and it doesn't kill the plants, but it, sometimes the caterpillars, but you learn to tolerate those caterpillars. You get a beautiful butterflies. <laughs> so, two questions from the same person. What is the name of the small yellow butterfly which you see commonly in Mumbai? Yeah. And same person had another question. Is it good to have flower attra flowers attracting butterflies in our balcony gardens? Will it yeah, attract but... harmless ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but you see, uh, the yellow butterfly, you see, is called a uh, common grass yellow. You see, it's a small small butterfly which flutters around the roadside. The bigger yellows are called the immigrants, which are on the roadside. The trees are planted of cassia trees. They lay eggs on the cassia trees. The small ones are grass yellows, and they don't actually uh, lay eggs on grasses, but they are usually found in grasses. And then about the flowers, yes, you can have a lot of flowers on your garden. Not only your balcony will look nice, but it will attract butterflies like the like the Sada Fuli or you have the, the um, I don't know about the English name, I forgot it about the English name, but here you have Lantana. Lantana is, you can get different colors, yellow, blue, pink, you can, I know, butterflies don't like uh, roses or uh, chrysanthemums or dahlias. They'll, you know, flowers also are, there are bee flowers, there are butterfly flowers, there are bat flowers and bird flowers. So uh, butterfly flowers are tiny uh, bunches, they come in bunches like the Axora, and then the lantana, they, the tiny flowers together. So they prefer that kind of flowers. They don't come on the big flowers like the dahlia or, or, or uh, chrysanthemums. So that depends on which flowers you use. Yeah. Someone just private messaged me. Is that they have a frangipani tree? Is there anything they can do to attract butterflies? Actually, frangipani tree, you know, uh, actually is no good for attracting butterflies. Actually, it cheats in insects. You know, it why it cheats? It attracts the insects to pollinate it but doesn't reward it with the nectar. Normally, okay. instead, <laughs> it cheats <laughs> the insects. Actually, frangipani is not an Indian tree also, basically. It's a, it's a uh, South American tree that's come from um, Hawaii and that region. But uh, uh, frangipani, actually, you know, insects visit the, the flowers for nectar. And while doing that, it pollinates. And flower rewards the butterflies with the nectar. And butterflies or bees will flower, visit only when the nectar is uh, there. But sometimes uh, the the frangipani actually fools uh, by somehow uh, the insects uh, visit it, pollinate, but they don't get, there's no nectar in the flower. <laughs> Same person messaged, what about the alamanda? Alamanda also um, is another, not an Indian tree. So it doesn't actually attract butterflies as such. Oh. But it's a showy, showy plant. It's a climber actually, Alamanda, with yellow and beautiful trumpet uh, flowers. But uh, it doesn't really attract uh, um, okay. butterflies. You know, butterflies require a neat bunch, small bunch like Axora, Lantana, or Verbena, or okay. Pentus. These are all with bunches. They come in bunches, small bunches. And yet another question. Do hibiscus att attract uh... Butterflies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So surprisingly, though it is a large flower, but it does attract butterflies and uh, it attracts uh, sunbirds also. 
so it's good to have hibiscus around you and especially those not the not the double hibiscus but the large hawaiian hibiscus or even the ordinary red hibiscus are good to attract sunbirds and butterflies both of them yes uh comment by chinmay lanternas are considered invasive species yes once so on a time lanterna was considered as invasive species but now uh, lanterna has no, no more that much of a force to worry about we have got eupatorium uh, chromonella that is more worrying actually it and there's another uh, creeper called mile a minute it grows almost okay. a mile in a minute so okay. those are more invasive than the lanterna a lanterna which we use in gardens actually are not invasive at all what we, which one came the wild variety came from south america that was invasive and that is still that place is invasive but now they have been able to control but not to worry about on lantana lantana is very good for butterflies and birds also the butterf the berries of lantana are eaten by uh, birds also even as a child i ate them but, but birds love the cherries of the berries of the lantana and butterflies love the nectar okay we're done with the questions isaac thank yes. you so much for your time welcome welcome I really appreciate it and uh, well one question has come come in if you have the time yeah yeah what about butterflies found near lonar crater do they have any special features not really basically uh, lonar you know lonar possibly occurred much later uh, uh, before the bird butterflies possibly were there so it really didn't matter which but that area will have the same butterflies where they are found outside lonar crater and inside lonar crater same it all depends on the vegetation actually what vegetation is there that determines the species of butterflies you plant a lot of kadi patta will have common mormon coming around your house you plant yes. lemon plants you will have common lime butterfly coming around house so it all depends on the vegetation the vegetation depends uh, determines the species of butterflies okay as i was saying i like thank you so much for your time and thank you all for welcome. attending i am uh, glad that uh, the actually the electricity is gone and oh. I'm, I'm not an inverter, but luckily the internet is not gone. So we survived. Sure. We Thank are you. grateful for the, <laughs> for the internet for that. No, I was worried. I switched off the fan. Actually, I was sweating, but I said, okay, because I have to save the inverter. <laughs> thank now you I so can... much for your time and thank Most you, welcome. everybody. Most Do welcome. Please attend all our future talks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.